Hi everyone, welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. I'm Mike Riley, your trainer once again. I'm the founder and editor of a website called journalisttoolbox.ai, a resource site for journalists who are looking for AI tools to use for a variety of tasks. Uh, image creation, audio, video creation, fact checking tools, data tools. We've got all kinds of really useful resources here. Uh, you can click on each one of these tabs if you go to journalisttoolbox.ai. You'll see we have a link to a tool, a description of that tool. Uh, many of these tools are free, but some of them are freemium where you have to you know, pay for an upgrade after a while. Uh, we also have training videos that are built into these. They last about five to 15 minutes long. Uh, on the right-hand rail here, you'll see a link to training videos, which has more than 105 training videos on it, uh, as well as a uh, newsletter uh, that comes out every other uh, Tuesday around 8 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, this is our YouTube channel that you link to off of that rail. Uh, you can go in here and there's more than 105 videos, as I mentioned. Everything from AI tools to mapping, data visualization, uh, editing video and audio on your phone. Um, they're short, you know, they're all five to 15 minutes long, a couple of longer ones on writing prompts. Uh, and uh, you can subscribe for free really useful if you need to uh, get us you know you want to pick up a few extra skills or maybe you have a, a staff member who's a little short on digital skills uh, those exercises are really good for them uh, this is the journalist toolbox.ai substack newsletter uh, every other Tuesday around 8 a.m. we have a new newsletter come out that focuses on a tool or maybe a, a collection of tools uh, that solve a certain problem or cover a certain topic uh, it's about a five minute read, usually has a little training video built into it too if you want to watch that. Uh, very short and sweet, uh, but it has uh, you know, everything you need uh, as a journalist to uh, use AI tools effectively. Um, one of the tools we're going to work with today is called Perplexity. This is part of a series of Perplexity uh, exercises that I'm going to do. Um, so our worksheets here at bit.ly slash toolbox24. It's got several different types of exercises on it, fin tool, perplexity, uh, summarize wise, among many others. But we're gonna work with perplexity, which is this one right up at the top. And I'm just gonna start us off with just a real basic uh, uh, search in it. Um, perplexity is a kind of a combo tool. It's part lar large language model like OpenAI uh, and their chat GPT tool. But it's also uh, a search tool. It'll pull information from both what it's trained on uh, as well as web search. Um, and it really provides really, really nice answer driven results with citations to sources. It has little footnotes built into it. Um, I, I use the paid version, $20 monthly, which allows me to use libraries and generate images and things like that on the topic that I'm covering. But you can use the free tool as well for these basic searches that we're doing. Um, I just upgrade because of, uh, you know, I like a, a couple of the extras that it offers me. Um, I've got a couple prompts here you can, uh, you know, uh, play with. Uh, one's a little more broad. What's the impact of generative AI on the legal industry? My other prompt is a little more focused. Uh, what, how, what impact has generative AI had on the treatment of brain cancer? And what are some of the AI technologies still in development for this treatment? Uh, so I'll run both of these through here. Um, Perplexity, very clean tool, very simple to use. Uh, it's got a very clean interface over here. Um, and uh, yeah, I've logged in down here, so you can see my account down here. It gives me a few sample uh, 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 prompts here. Uh, one of the ones I like to start with anytime I'm using a new tool, um, you know, what, what is Perplexity AI? You know, just ask it about itself. What do you do well? What do you struggle with? Um, it helps you get to know the tool a little bit better. Um, it it may, you know, make it talk about itself and do a little introduction. Um, so uh, up in here, I'm just going to paste in my uh, little uh, prompt here. Uh, what impact has uh, Gen AI had on the legal industry? Just so you can kind of see what the results uh, that spill out of this. Um, and over here, it now logs this into my library here. Um, I've got my citations at the top instead of at the bottom, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then the footnotes you'll see in here to each citation. So this first uh, paragraph pulls from number one and number two. Um, so you can see it'll take you directly to the page on Deloitte uh, that uh, um, uh, it has the information uh, that is in this answer here. Um, so, you know, these footnotes are very important. 
Um, it also has really good follow-up questions, as many of, uh, of the large language models do. You know, if you're asking about this, you know, maybe you also want to consider asking me about this. You know, what potential risks do job dis, do, you know, more more detailed follow-ups about jobs displacement in the legal industry due to generative AI. Um, so I can go in here and generate that answer. Um, you know, and it starts to talk about you know automation and job roles changes and things like that. Billing models, um, it's going to impact a lot of that. Um, so it also gives me uh, this option here uh, to search for images. Um, it's just like doing a Google image search. Um, I can search for videos on this topic. And I can also generate an image. And this is uh, part of that paid version of uh, perplexity. Uh, and I can go in and hit generate image. Uh, and it'll take a minute or two uh, for it to generate the image. Uh, and uh, you will have uh, a cool little image that will pop up here at the top. I can select, do I want it as a painting, an illustration, diagram, or a photograph? Um, a diagram, be careful with. Make sure you uh, know the data it's working with um, if you're uh, trying to do that. But here's a little, you know, kind of your typical menacing robot, you know, worker uh, uh, image. Um, I've had mixed results with the images out of these. Some of them are quite good. Others are, uh, you know, I've had some that have been look, look like they were a Norman Rockwell painting. Yeah, so you never know what you're going to get. Um, you can convert this uh, into other formats uh, into a page, uh, and also share it uh, as well with others. Uh, uh, you can also, uh, you know, cut and paste out of here. Uh, it does have a copy clipboard button here if you want to pull everything from it. Uh, you can also go through and edit your query, or just ask it, you know, to regenerate it too. Um, it's got the share buttons here as well as some other tools. You can view all listing of all the sources. Uh, or if it gives you a really bad result, uh, it hallucinates in some way, uh, hit the report button and, you know, and tell it why it screwed up. It, it really helps it learn much quicker. Um, so again, this is a really good place over here, the library. You can go back and find your uh, queries in here. Uh, you can start a new thread here, and then I can go in and ask, uh, you know, whatever. And I got to turn on my pro account here. Um, and uh, I can go in and do this second one, which is a little more specific. Uh, it's about, you know, brain cancer. And, you know, typically if you're asking, you know, uh, a couple of questions, you're going to be okay. But try not to overload any large language model with long, long prompts. Ask it in a series of layers. You know, ask it uh, one question, then another question, then another question. And, you know, really give it time to, to answer. Um, kind of like doing an interview, uh, you know, uh, for those of us who are journalists, you know, you want to layer your interview questions and not, you know, overwhelm people with an eight part question of some kind because um, they won't answer half of it. Um, so, again, we get some good quality follow ups in here and, you know, we can continue to search for images. It doesn't filter out uh, uh, images uh, that are uh, rights free. You can go in and do that yourself or reverse image search the image, see where it comes from. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then see if uh, you, you can get the rights to it. Um, something to keep in mind um, as, you're, as you're doing these. So, you know, you've got your videos, you've got images. Um, you can generate an image as well. If I wanted this as maybe an illustration, um, it'll uh, generate the image for me. Um, so, you know, these are the images you generate in this are typically things I would use as a, like an icon on the journalist toolbox site or a header image. Uh, on the journalist toolbox website. Not something I would use really for, for news re reporting or some type of, of news illustration of some kind. Um, I would just use it as like, like a, a featured image or header image uh, in, in a page uh, and identify the fact that you know, you're using an AI generated image. They're very easy uh, to download out of here. You can uh, click on them or, or right click on them and download them uh, out of here. So that's a quick and dirty version of uh, Perplexity AI. Uh, perplexity.ai just go and set up a free account uh, or if you're feeling venturous and want to part with $20 a month uh, use the paid version which I use I think it just gives me a little better results and, and also some some deeper search options uh, as far as images and things like that I uh, hope you found this useful um, again we'll be doing a series of these uh, about once a month uh, on perplexity and I'll feature some other large language models as well see you on the next video take care